All right, welcome to part two of this amazing video that is documenting this prediction that the stock market, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 stock market indexes will make their peak on June 22nd, a peak since the low of October 2022, and then begin their biggest crash in all of history from this peak on to be predicted to be on June 22nd. The first part of this video explained briefly some of the information from God's true big picture of signs, patterns, and connections, which is only being explained on this channel, that communicated that this would be the day of the prophetic peak. This part two, this section of part two of this video, in fact, I think I'm going to make part three. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this part two the information that was known ahead of June 1st. In fact, what I'm saying is that this video that will be part two was a video that was made before June 1st. And this video will explain how God was pointing ahead of time to June 1st. And as was explained in part one, June 1st ended up being the date that Joe Biden collapsed on the stage. But there's so much more to that. I can't even put the words on that. That's such an understatement. And that will be part three. Part three, arguably, from a prophetic signs point of view, will be the the most interesting part of all three of these parts. Don't get me wrong, all of God's signs is interesting and important. But what I'm saying is I'm enthusiastically encouraging you to make sure that you watch part three as well to learn about what is the significance of the prophetic signs that occurred on June 1st, including Joe Biden's collapse, but much more than that. And there's much, much more to the collapse of Joe Biden on the stage in Colorado on June 1st. So having said that, what I'm going to do now for the remainder of this part two is play the video, probably unedited, that was produced before June 1st. It's, it's very significant and important. It's important also for understanding what is going on here and what is being explained God's big picture of signs, and that's why I'm replaying this video. In other words, it's foundational for the information that then occurred on June 1st, and it's part of this big picture. So don't skip part two. I'll just read this email here. This email is documenting the prediction that on June 1st, 2023, something significant will happen regarding the financial markets. Perhaps there will be a stock market crash that triggers the circuit breaker and halts trading. Perhaps a major bank will go insolvent. Perhaps the U.S. will default on its debt. This was written a few days ago. I think now what is going on is that it could simply be the beginning of the decline. June 1st, the significance of June 1st. And the reason why I say that is because God is pointing, as I will explain, to June 1st, May 29th, and May 30th. Because on those days, the S&P 500 stock market index closed at 4,205 points. 4,205 points on both days. The Monday close was 4,205.45 points. And then the Tuesday close on the 30th of May was 4,205.52 points, which is a difference of 0 0.07 points. And this hints at God's signature number, the number seven, which he uses to indicate his divine touch upon something. For example, there are seven colors in a rainbow, seven notes in a musical scale, seven levels in the periodic table of elements, seven medals of antiquity that civilization 
historically is based upon. Seven objects in the night sky in our solar system that move, that are visible with the naked eye. Seven continents, and on and on. And so this is God's signature number, the number seven. And in between these two dates that I am saying that God has used to indicate the peak of the stock market, the Monday and Tuesday close on May 29th and May 30th, this difference of 0 0.07 points is significant. It indicates God's touch upon this. And what is he pointing to? Well, first of all, he's pointing to the level 4200, which hints at the number 42, which in Bible prophecy is mentioned or alluded to seven times with regards to the end times period of rule of the Antichrist. No, that's first of all. Second of all, the market has been obsessed with this 4200 level in the stock market in the S&P since almost a year. And recently there have been news articles in financial news headlines speaking to this in how the S&P stock market was not able to overcome the 4200 level since last year. On February 2nd, 2023, the stock market came within four or five points of that level in the intraday high and then retreated. And then a, a couple of months later returned to this level and for probably a month or so, the stock market has done an uncanny hovering. It has hovered underneath this 4200 level, literally just under it. And then we had these other stock market signs, which I won't get into in this video, including Title 42, the expiration of it, which was a couple of weeks ago on May 11th, and, and other signs related to this, which, by the way, that was involving the border wall of security, which hints at the book of Joshua and the walls of security that fell on the ancient city of Jericho in God's judgment. That is what God uses the border wall uh, of security crisis of America to as symbolism for this story in the book of Joshua. And so, and that's why 42. So, what we are talking about here is a collapse of a stock market, of the stock market. And this is also a parallel with the collapse of the walls of security of ancient Jericho, which is, again, the reason for the Title 42 signs, which I can't explain in this video. But the point is, is that God was uh, pointing to this 4200 level. Even the mainstream financial news was talking about this 4200 level and the debate between investors as to whether it was going to go above 4,200 or not. And this was an ongoing debate because the market just kept hovering right underneath the 4,200 level until a few days ago. It finally broke and closed above the 4,200 level. And I think it was only one or two days that it did this. But the point is, is that it broke this level, and I believe the symbolism in this is that it is indicating that this level was a symbolic level of iniquity. In the Bible, it speaks of the cup of iniquity overflowing and God waiting for the cup of iniquity to overflow before judgment, destruction, and God's destruction of that people or nation. And through this pointing to the 4200 level, which is in itself Antichrist symbolism, God was pointing to the level being reached after which of iniquity, after which the Antichrist will come onto the scene and destroy the nation. In the... Uh, end times judgment period. 
and the Antichrist system destroy the nation, which is in the works. It's not all of a sudden going to happen now. It's been uh, happening and increasingly so for especially the last three years, but and then further beyond that, especially since the election of Trump and the left, the political cult of the left losing their mind and their liberal values. And then furthermore, it goes back for that matter over a hundred years with the big uh, uh, roots of the modern progressive movement. But anyway, that's the point here is that God is pointing to this level as symbolism for the cup of iniquity overflowing at the 4200 level, which is Antichrist symbolism. And I forgot to mention that the S&P 500 index in itself is Antichrist symbolism because the 500th Greek or word in Strong's Greek New Testament concordance is the word in Greek for Antichrist. And so the S&P 500 is in itself uh, an index that God uses for Antichrist symbolism. This isn't the only instance by far. There are many, many instances of God using the S&P 500 uh, stock index as Antichrist symbolism because of the number 500 and other reasons. And so now what we have here though, when the market finally broke the 4,200 level, it broke at the same time, the level that it reached in February. And that level, because it, like I said, just peaked four or five points just below it in February. And that level in itself, and that level in itself is a peak that goes back to last year, last uh, August. Um, so, in other words, it's almost a year. And so that's the well, that's the point, is that this level forty two hundred was established in February, and. Anyway, we have this level that God was pointing to that, that dates back many months. And so we have this overflowing, but the peak of it in the last couple of days surpassed the peak in February. And that peak again goes back to, all, you know, almost a year. And so in other words, it's very significant to the peak that it made in the last few days. It's a peak that goes back to last year. And the Peak high was 4,200. And, and the peak closes were 4,200 and five points, like I said, on the two days. And they are separated by 0 0.07 points, which indicates God's touch upon it. Well, the thing is, is that this 4,205 number what is God pointing to with that? What is the purpose of it? Why did it close only 0 0.7 points uh, difference on those two days, indicating the peak? Because it's predicted now that it will drop and now begin the biggest crash in all of history from this 4,205 level. So what is the significance of the 4,205 level? Well, it hints at 205. This is because the... 205th word in Strong's Greek New Testament concordance is this. Strong's G205 is this word here in Greek, acrothinian, and it means this. It means the top of a heap, the top of a heap, the top of a pile, the best of the spoils. It's the... Uh, well, it's th this reference, this is the usage. The definition is this. But the, the, but the usage is in Hebrew 7.4, and there's only one usage of it, which regards Melchizedek, the priest that Abraham gave one-tenth of his spoils to. So we can see here, too, um, the definition, again, is the uh, extreme peak of the heap. Okay, the extreme top, extremity, topmost part of a heap. 
Okay, so this is amazing because that's exactly what we are talking about here. We are talking about the peak of the stock market and that God has pointed to this peak and identified this peak that goes back. It's not the all-time peak. The all-time peak is in January of 2022, but this is the peak, the highest peak since then. Let me show you a graph. All right, so here is a chart of the S&P 500. Here we have the beginning of 2023. Here's that peak in February that I was just mentioning that was just four or five points below the 4,200 level. And then this is the recent days where it finally broke the 4,200 level in a close. Here it didn't close above 4,200 and it declined again. And here it finally broke and closed above the 4,200 level at 4,205. And again, that was this is the close here, 4,205.52. And um, this is 0 0.07 points above the previous close on the Monday. All right. Now, again, the reason why God did this, I'm saying, is that God is pointing to the number 205, which means the peak. It means the top of the pile, the top of the heap. The heap of iniquity, in fact, is what it is. And so here is this hovering that I was talking about where the market was perplexed, to put it mildly, as to what in the world is with this 4,200 level. Is it going to go? I mean, this doesn't happen. Look, anywhere on this chart, you can't see it in the last two years. This sort of thing, this sort of behavior, where it just hovers in one area like that. So the market, like I'm saying, was perplexed as to whether it was going to finally break the 4,200 level, which hadn't been broken since here, which goes back to, like I was saying, August of 2022. So it's a big deal. And like I am saying, God is indicating that this is the level. It's the symbolic level of iniquity because it's the 4,200 level, which symbolizes the Antichrist. In other words, it symbolizes judgment on America. And the 42 have level was broken. In other words, this is symbolic of the cup of iniquity now overflowing, which means that it is now time for judgment destruction of America. And that destruction of America will come through, first of all, destroying its power base, which is its economy, which is its finance. We are talking about the biggest crash in history now. And when this crash happens from this precise level, as I am predicting, it will be because of the things that I'm saying in this video are true. That is the purpose of this prediction. It is to prove that the things that I am saying in this video are 100% accurate, true. They are fact. The cup of iniquity is overflowing. There is a God. The God is the God of the Bible, the God of Israel. It isn't a New Age God. It isn't an Islamic God. It isn't a... Yeah, I was going to say... Yeah, never mind. But it, it, it... Well, the God of Catholicism isn't the Bible. It's confusing, though, because, of course, there are... Christian Catholics that will make it to heaven despite their Catholicism. But, but however, uh, Catholicism and the Catholic traditions and the gods that they worship, although they claim that they don't worship them, such as Mary and the saints, are false gods as well. And the point is, though, is that this is the purpose of the prediction. It is to prove the Bible is true, which Catholicism isn't. It's man-made religion on top of the Bible, right? So that's why I include that in this. But um, so that, that is the point. And the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. Full stop. All right, so if you are a new ager, if you have, if you are quote unquote religious but not spiritual, you need to reconsider what that means. Everyone has a religion. No one doesn't have a religion. Eastern religion, Hinduism, which is what New Age is, is a religion, 
but to a Western mind, it doesn't appear to be a religion because it's not about believing the correct thing. It's not about doctrine. But, and it's more about practices like yoga and meditation and spiritual healings, quote unquote. And, but it is a religion and it's a false religion. And the thing that the God of the Bible hates the most is false religion and false religious practices. So if you think that you are a quote unquote good person, know that Jesus said that no one is. And your false religious practices such as yoga and meditation are an abomination to God. So I'm just warning you, there are people that think that they have a relationship with God, but do not. And Satan is real and he is the deceiver. He is the liar of lies. He's the father of lies. And he is many, many times more intelligent than you are. He has figured out schemes in which to fool people. And as it says in the Bible, people get the deception that they ask for. As it says in, for example, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. God sends them the delusion that they are asking for. And if you really believe that you can spiritually evolve your spirit through practices like yoga and meditation, etc., and that you're on a journey of reincarnation and an evolution of your spirit, and that you are, in fact, ultimately part of God, know that you will get the deception you ask for. You will get the supernatural spiritual highs from yoga, but they are the counterfeit Holy Spirit. They are satanic. Those supernatural highs that people that do yoga get and are, in fact, addicted to. It's called spiritual bondage. So this is the point of this video. It's to prove that the God of Israel is the true God. Now is the time to repent and to change your worldview and to reconsider everything that you believe and deconstruct what you have created, the, the edifice that you have created in your mind regarding what you think reality is, because it isn't. This is the proof that you have the, the wrong worldview and religion. If you are not a biblical Christian, and there are many quote unquote Christians that aren't, aren't true Christians for that matter also. And so in other words, it's a warning. And so anyway, we can expect that this was the peak. If the market goes above 4,205, and doesn't crash in the biggest crashes of all of history from this level, then this prediction is proven wrong. But if now the market crashes from the peak that was made on May 29th and May 30th at this close of 4,205, which God has used to point to the top of the pile, the peak, the cup of iniquity overflowing at the 4,200 level and brimming over the sides of the cup, which be, is the reason for the beginning of the judgment destruction on America and the West. God is focused particularly with his judgment destruction on America, on the English-speaking countries, the Anglosphere, and on the West, in that order. Because God's judgment is relative, commensurate with the amount of light that the people had been given. And America and the English-speaking countries and the West were extremely blessed, yet they have turned away from God. We see this pattern in ancient Israel. Israel was God's nation, and then God destroyed it because the people turned away from God, and God had blessed Israel. And so that's the parallel here with our time and why God is now fixated on destroying America, Canada, Australia, and the UK, and New Zealand, and first and foremost, and then also the West, and also judgment on the world. But that's what's the plan right now. And that's what this sign right here is indicating. When this market will crash from this level, know that the things that I'm saying in this video are true. All right, now, I knew of or that 
God was pointing to June 1st before the closes of the S&P on May 29th and May 30th. I knew of May uh, June 1st before then. And so, like I'm saying, though, the prediction has been refined since this email was composed again on May 26th. Now I am saying that the peak is at the 4,205 level. Whatever happens on June 1st remains to be seen. And also again on June 5th, as I mentioned. But now I will read this email just quickly that I wrote back on May 26th to detail some of the reasoning, profound reasoning, for why it was known that this time period would be a period of stock market crash or the beginning of the stock market crash. We'll see. It could be both. It's definitely, if nothing significant happens on the 1st or 5th, it's simply that it was the peak. It's now, uh, the peak was made. It's now crashing. It doesn't have to be a, a necessarily something recognizably as an event, but it will be recognized eventually down the road when people realize that we are, yes, in fact, now in the biggest crash of all of history. And then this video will have documented how this was known back at the peak. Okay, precisely the peak, because of course, there are some people that are predicting a stock market crash. That's not that much of a supernatural prediction. But what is, is predicting the precise level and, and explaining the reasons why. In other words, the 205 hinting at the top of the peak. That, that is what makes this supernatural and indisputably from God. If you choose to think reasonably and rationally, it, most people don't, however, because when confronted with information that contradicts their worldview, most people block it out. It's called in psychology, belief perseverance. It is irrational, but that's human psychology. But that is rooted in pride, which is the root of sin in the Bible. And therefore, there is no excuse. It is a sin to not change your one, your worldview when confronted with information that is contradictory to it is a sin. It's rooted in pride and it, and that's the root of sin in the Bible. And so this is, you know, although God designed us and our human psychology, it does not mean that we are not supposed to overcome it. We, and what I am saying is you, one needs to overcome this psychological phenomenon that's very, very powerful called belief perseverance. There is no rational way to explain away how the peak was known precisely at 4,205, the day of the peak. I'm not talking a couple of weeks from now when we're clearly in a crash or even two days from now. This happened yesterday. The market is not crashing today. In fact, the market hasn't even opened yet at the time of the recording of this video. Okay, enough said. So I'm just going to read the uh, information from uh, of some of the signs, prophetic signs that God was using to point to this time period. And let's begin this email. This email is documenting the prediction that on June 1st, 2023, something significant will happen regarding the financial markets. Perhaps there will be a stock market crash that triggers the circuit breaker and halts trading. Perhaps a major bank will go insolvent. Perhaps the US will default on its debt, okay? Nonetheless, this was written before now. The understanding now is that simply the market has peaked. Something else might happen like what I've just described, but it's not necessary for this prediction. This prediction is fully adequate with the 4,205 level and the cup of iniquity symbolism that I have explained. This video alerted me to the fact that I'm talking about a different video, uh, that the media is talking about an quote unquote X date. Janet Yellen has suggested as early as June 1st, in checking with or for any significance related to a financial collapse and the stock market collapse, 
the first thing that occurred to me to check is the connection between April 18th and June 1st. April 18th is when four stories of a car park collapsed in the financial district of Manhattan just after 4 p.m., the time when the stock market closes, hence that collapse, circuit breaker, close of the stock market. Four people went to the hospital and a fifth person refused treatment. Four out of five people. And that's... Uh, Significant because that was four times four days before the four horses in five days sign on the date 5-4, which the people that I am writing to this email are familiar with what this means, but I can't explain it in this video. It's explained in other videos. And with this four stories car park that collapsed after 4 p.m. with four people going to the hospital, there were four New York City Sheriff's Department vehicles and they made an official a statement regarding this. Four stories, four hospitalized, 4 p.m., four sheriff's cars. This is 44 days before June 1st. If June 1st is the X date or a date for a financial collapse, this is precisely the connection we would expect from this April 18th date with the collapse of this car park in the financial district at the time of the close of the stock market on Wall Street just a few blocks away. Next, I thought about checking the connection from the date the debt ceiling was reached. The quote-unquote X date is about the debt ceiling after all. The date was January 19th, 119 hints at 119 and 911, which by the way occurred near the financial district. The number 19 also hints at 911. It is exactly 19 weeks from January 19th to June 1st. Additionally, the debt ceiling was reached on 119, January 19th, was the debt that the debt level was 31.4 trillion, which hints at 3.4 or 3.14, which which hints at 3.14. 119, January 19th is not only 19 weeks before September uh, June 1st, but it is also four months and 13 days. And this too hints at pi, because 3.14 hints at pi. Okay, so this 19 weeks connection is also four months and 13 days, which hints at pi. And 13, uh, 19 weeks back was the day of the debt ceiling being reached, which hinted at pi, 31.4. In fact, because, by the way, God said his name to Moses when, he, when Moses asked for God's name in Exodus 3.14. And God replied that his name is I Am. And the Hebrew symbol for this is the exact same symbol as the symbol for Pi. God, in other words, said his name is Pi. And Pi is this mysterious transcendental number that God has, if you will, baked into his creation. In fact, it was speculated that one of the reasons God used the 413 date is for this reason, because it hints at pi. Pi hints at the eclipse, and the eclipse peaked over the 15th state, and the leader of the Republicans, who is at the center of the debt ceiling controversy, was elected leader on the 15th vote. This is why it was exactly 15 weeks which is also 105 days, which also hints at 15, from the reach of the debt ceiling on January 19th to the date 5-4, the day of the Kentucky Derby sign in the 15th state, on the day of national prayer that was initiated by Abraham Lincoln, who was born near the grounds of the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby sign on 5-4 in turn is four times seven days to June 1st. The Kentucky Derby on 5-4 was four horse deaths in five days. This was four horses out of a total of seven horses that ended up dying at the Kentucky Derby this year. Four out of seven horses on 5-4 hints at adding four times seven days to 5-4 to get June 1st. Also, from the reach of the debt ceiling on January 19th, there are two profound ways it connects to June 1st. 19 weeks 
and also 15 weeks, which is 105 days, plus 4 times 7 days. In other words, there is a second witness to the fact that January 19th reveals June 1st is the X date. And that's how God's true big picture of signs, patterns, and connections works. It works on the principle of second and third and multiple witnesses confirming a matter as the, God, as the Bible says is required. And that's what makes what is being explained on this channel true and not a product of one's imagination and what makes what is being explained on this channel different and unique than everything else on the internet that claims to be an analysis of God's true big picture of signs, patterns, and connections, which is only being explained on this channel. Next, it occurred to me to check February 2nd, 222, 2023. 2 to the date February 2nd, sorry, February 2nd, not February 22nd, February 2nd, 2023. The date 2 2 was also the date that the S&P peaked just four or five points below 4,200, as I mentioned earlier. The market has been obsessed with this 4,200 level since then. The market has been hovering just underneath this level for many days, in fact, weeks. Besides this uncanny hovering underneath 4,200 for many days, the market has been flirting with this level since 2-2, the date 2-2. We also had the title 42 and wallet sign on May 11th, which is three sets of seven days before June 1st. And this connection is also extremely relevant as the Title 42 sign regarded the border wall of security, which is Joshua symbolism, and thus three sets of seven symbolism. As I explained earlier, God is using the border wall of security as symbolism for the walls that collapsed, the walls of security that collapsed in the book of Joshua. And in that story, there is a prophetic, profound three sets of seven. Joshua led the Hebrews around the walls for once per seven days, and then on the seventh day, seven priests blew seven trumpets as they marched around seven times. So this connection from May 11th now gives us three extraordinarily relevant connections. Returning back to 2-2, two, two, from an Elliott Wave principle perspective, this peak was the this peak that was right under 4200 level was the peak of wave two. The prophetic sign we received on this 2-2 date was the Groundhog Day sign. This sign and its connections are explained in the Groundhog Day email and video for that matter uh, on this channel. Look for that video. The Groundhog seeing its shadow was ominous of more bad times ahead. What is truly astounding is that part of this sign is derived from the fact that through the small town, this small town runs Highway 119. Which is why it is amazing that 2-2 is 119 days before June 1st, the X date. And again, this X date connects with 19 weeks to the date 119, which also hints at 119, and again 119 hints at 911. Okay, and 911 occurred right near Wall Street. Okay, now also 119 days is 17 days, or 17 weeks exactly. And on 9-11, the two planes struck the two towers 17 minutes apart. And that's a second witness to the fact or the relevance that 119 hints at, or 119 days hints at 9-11, because it is also exactly 17 weeks. And 17, the number, is extremely relevant when it comes to 9-11. The world watched after the first plane struck the first tower, the world, world watched live and was confused as to whether it was an accident or terrorism until 17 minutes later when the second plane struck the se uh, second tower, which became the second witness confirmation from God that it was terrorism and therefore an act of judgment from God. That parallels Isaiah 9-11 when 
uh, with the ancient raid of the Assyrians, the world's first documented terrorists. I'm going off onto a tangent. And, um, and that's the nature of God's big picture of science. It's an interconnected web, and it's extremely difficult to explain any of it because you end up pulling the entire web. And 9-11 occurred right near Wall Street. Furthermore, on 9-11, there were stock market signs. And when the stock market reopened, it crashed a record 7% on the once in seven years Shemitah financial debts wipeout day. That's very interesting. That is another, and that I believe is another reason why, or for the 0 0.07 point difference between the two closes at the 4,205 level on May 29th and May 30th. It is also hinting at this once in seven years Shemitah financial debts wipeout day. Once every seven years, uh, Jews, the ancient Jews were instructed to forgive debts and wipe out financial debts. And that's why it was astounding that, it cannot, that the market collapsed 7% on the day that it reopened after 9-11, the stock market, which just happened to be that one day in seven years of the financial wipeout debt day. And then seven years later on the once in seven years financial wipeout day in 2008, the stock market lost a record seven, uh, the stock market lost um, another 7% and it was again a record and it was 777.7 .7 points that it lost. That, that alone is 100% proof of God. But the stubborn, and I mean that affectionately, I, 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 you know, it, it, it is a sort of pride that keeps people in their irrational, uh, that irrationally keeps them in their belief perseverance. And so therefore it's stubbornness. And uh, my, in, my intent here is to not insult people though, it is to encourage them to think rationally. And so anyway, that's rational uh, proof of the God of the Bible. You cannot have the record financial wipeout debt being 7% seven years apart on the once in seven years financial wipeout day, and then additionally have it be 777.7 .7 points. And if you don't believe that it is, or you're skeptical, well, please look it up, because if it is, then you therefore know that the God of the Bible is true. And so why would you not look it up if you don't want to believe what I'm saying? Look it up. You know, the reason why you won't look it up is because... You don't want to know that the God of the Bible is true, spiritually, unconsciously. That's the truth. Okay, moving on. Um, with this 119 days connection from 2-2 to 6-1, uh, June 1st, it is four recent financial market signs dates. The sign connection from January 19th, the connection from February 2nd, the connection from April 18th, and May 11th, as I just explained, that connect with extremely relevant and profound connections. And one of the four dates connects to June 1st in two relevant and profound ways. Actually, April 18th connects to May 4th with four times four days, and as was just explained, May 4th connects with four times seven days to June 1st. And so two of the four dates connect in two different manners to June 1st. This is merely scratching the surface for the reasons for how this prediction is known in advance. For more information, please visit bitshoot.com video channel Harris Crash Prediction and also read the website trumpprediction.com. Now, I also later wrote another uh, example which I'll just explain here of a connection to what is happening here to June 1st. Let's see, where is it? June 1st is 666 days after the 6.0 earthquake. That was 110 miles off the coast of Tokyo, Japan, 
during the Olympics on Obama's 60th birthday. The reason for 110 miles is because, again, Joshua led the Hebrews around the walls of security of the ancient city of Jericho before they collapsed in God's judgment, which was due to an earthquake, and archaeology confirms this. And Joshua in the Bible is recorded as dying at the age of 110. And so 110, in other words, is symbolism for earthquake judgment, which is why this earthquake occurred 110 miles off the coast of Tokyo at the time of the Olympics, which made this a judgment sign for the world, which pointed to the Antichrist, whose number in Bible prophecy is 666, on his 60th birthday, which is why the earthquake was 6.0. In other words, this is indisputable confirmation that the Antichrist is Barack Obama. This is one drop in an ocean of evidence. And those Christians that falsely believe that the identity of the Antichrist is not knowable until their false doctrine of dispensationalism comes true, when the dispensational age of the end times supposedly begins after the supposed rapture of all Christians, there will be a rapture, but not of all Christians, unlike the Calvinists and free grace, sovereign grace Christians think because of their, and dispensational Christians think because of their false doctrine, which leads to their false guessing game of the identity of the Antichrist. But this is, in other words, a clear identification of the Antichrist, the second Antichrist, I should say, because there are two. This one gets his power from the first Antichrist, who is Pope Francis. And no, Pope Francis isn't the false prophet because of the, the, uh, the term prophet. The first Antichrist is first apostate and only then from his seat of apostasy, which is the papacy, political. Uh, anyway, on his birthday, for his birthday, uh, the 60th of Obama, there, they, they, he and his organization had a fundraiser for his presidential library that requested $6, $60 or $600, which was a hint at 666. And 666 days later after this, and the 6.0 earthquake on the 60th birthday is this June 1st date, which, by the way, is 6.1, which hints at 6 times 1 equals 6. And so, and this gives this uh, financial symbolism with this dollar amount here. These are dollars we are talking about. This is financial symbolism. It's the collapse, and this is collapse of financial symbolism. This is a huge connection, in other words. This is a collapsing sign. We have financial symbolism, 666 days to this X date and the predicted collapse of the financial market. This is huge. Uh, it occurred to me that June 4th, 2023 is exactly 14 years after Obama went down to Egypt on June 4th, 2009. I haven't checked for any other confirmations yet, but I would think that this must be something very important. 14 years equals Joshua, 14 cows equals Egypt equals seven years end times period. For those that are unfamiliar with the Bible, Joseph went down to Egypt and he interpreted the dream of the king of Egypt, which is Antichrist symbolism, which involved 14 cows, which was symbolism in the interpretation of 14 years, seven years of prosperity and then seven years of famine, which was symbolic of the symbolic seven years of the end times, which began symbolically in 2017. And the prediction being made in this video will prove this. This is the purpose of this prediction. It is to prove that God's true big picture of signs, patterns, and connections is only being explained on this channel. And the, the purpose of saying that is to prove that the second coming is in 2024. This is how prophecy works. This is how God reveals things. This is the reason why one third of the Bible is prophecy. It is for the purpose of God proving himself. And also Jesus said that to those that didn't believe him, if you don't believe the words that I am saying, then believe the works that I am doing. The miracles and healings that he did were 
prophecy. They were for the purpose of proving the things that he was saying were true. And so this is the purpose of this prediction. That is from God. The reason why God has given me a voice through this prediction is to prove to you that the symbolic final seven years that is alluded to in Daniel chapter 9 began in 2017. And this is only just a drop in the, well, this, is the, this isn't even proof of it really. But anyway, uh, this is the reason for the 14 years connection. All right. Let's see now. June 4th is 666 days after Obama's birthday bash at his mansion at Martha's Vineyard. His mansion is 6,900 square feet, which hints at Daniel, 6, Daniel chapter 9, the most important prophecy in the Bible, which speaks of a period of 69 weeks followed by a 70th week, which is symbolic of the 70th set of seven years. And uh, it had this mansion has seven bathrooms, which is again alluding to Daniel chapter 9 and the 70th set of seven. Uh, the DJ leaked a photo from the party of Obama and Erica Badu with a lightning bolt between them. I'll post a, uh, that photo here in the video. Martha's Vineyard is the area of sea where the Mayflower turned around and sailed back into Cape Cod Bay after 66 days at sea. The Mayflower is extremely important. And so is the 400th anniversary because of the because the Hebrew slaves left Egypt, and the King of Egypt, Pharaoh, which is Antichrist King symbolism, after 400 years of affliction, which is why 400 years after the Mayflower in 1620, the which which was which was November in 2020, 1620 was the events that occurred. In November of 2020, I'll leave it to you to figure out what happened in November of 2020 that will lead to the return of the Antichrist to the presidency, Barack Obama. And by the way, the reason why this uh, lightning bolt at the mansion that is 6,900 feet and has seven bedrooms is uh, a prophetic sign that reveals the identity of the Antichrist, Barack Obama, is because the name Barack Obama in Hebrew means lightning from heaven. And Jesus said in Luke 10, 18, that he said he saw, uh, Jesus said he saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. Barack means lightning in Hebrew. Bama means high place, which in the Bible is a metaphor for heaven. For example, in Lucifer, uh, chapter, uh, sorry, the, 14th chapter of Isaiah, it says that Lucifer fell from the high place, which is a metaphor for heaven. And in Aramaic, the language Jesus would have spoken, the word for from is O. Oh. And so Barack Obama means lightning from heaven. Either Jesus didn't know what he was saying when he said this, or he knew that there would be a famous president named Barack Obama and said this anyway, knowing that it would confuse us, or he revealed the identity of the Antichrist. Obviously, the latter op option is the only one that makes any sense, and to conclude otherwise is irrational. And so, this is proof. And so is this prophetic sign on his prophetic birthday here. All right, make sure that you watch part three the amazing part three of this video. Aliens and UFOs are demons masquerading as aliens and UFOs. Most people's spiritual experiences are demonic deception, especially if they are not a true follower of Christ. Jesus died for you. It is time to repent, which means to change one's ways and turn to God and become a disciple of Jesus. Please leave a like and upvote the video. And once this prediction has come to pass, share this video with everyone you know and more. Don't stop sharing it everywhere in social media. It is essential that everyone immediately read the homepage of my website, trumpprediction.com.